Welcome to RLT Home. Today, we'll be talking about red light therapy and dementia, or Alzheimer's. We're going to look at hundreds of studies. Then we're going to focus on human studies. Then we're going to go out on the open web, look at what people are saying about their personal experiences with red light therapy and cognitive issues. We're going to make an opinion whether red light therapy works for dementia or not. And finally, we're going to talk about if you were to buy a device, then what should that look like? What should it have? What wavelengths? What capacities, etc. So without further ado, let's get started. And before we begin, this is not medical advice. If you are going to use a device for dementia and red light therapy, please consult a qualified healthcare professional. This is what we'll be covering in today's video. We'll be talking about the total number of studies done, human studies, how it works, real user feedback on social platforms, and ideal device to choose. The total number of studies that I consulted for this video are actually 112. And I have this little sheet by a Finnish researcher named Vladimir Heiss Kennan, who has compiled all this together. So what did the study say? 90% said there was a significant positive impact. 8% felt mildly positive, and 2% felt no impact at all. When you look at human-only studies, there are 19 in this sheet, but I also looked at a few more that I was able to find with Grok Expert, and those together said 85% had significant positive impact, 15% mildly positive, uh, which is improvements in mood and sleep and things like that. Uh, but there were no studies that had no improvement at all. Now, what are, what are these studies really saying? Think of amyloid betas as sticky substances made of protein that make it hard for us to think clearly. And the AMPK gives our brain more energy. Uh, it calms down swelling and it helps in better brain function. So in these studies, all of these appeared to have improved. Now, with brain, there are four tests that are important and are used to study improvements in cognitive function which are the MMSC, MOCA, ADAS-COG, and uh, the TRAILS. The biomarkers also improved, amyloid beta, the proteins that we discussed just now, and tau proteins dropped by 30 to 50%. Brain activity, the brain waves are called gamma, uh, that are related to thinking. They increased 20 to 30%. Brain blood flow improved. And, you know, what usually the common denominator was using it for 8 to 12 weeks at a minimum. So it does take some time to start seeing the results. Now, here is some real user feedback. So the first person here said they observed nothing at all. The second person thought that the anxiety uh, and decision making was better. In this one, an 89-year-old felt that it's more of a benefit than a cure. In this one, this person whose grandmother had Alzheimer's found that it works only if used in early stages of the disease. And this person thought, uh, they reported that family members' memory improved with red light therapy. And this person said that they had a co-worker who reported that it really helped uh, their dad's Alzheimer's. So what, what do we find out of after looking at all of this in totality, my assessment is that red light therapy will not reverse advanced Alzheimer's or dementia if the damage is deep set. But early treatment has strong chances. Somebody you know is starting to get dementia, then red light therapy could be a really good deterrent for, to, to avoid it getting worse. So start early for the best shot at stopping decline or prevention. Data is optimistic only in that window. But once dementia has set foot, then red light therapy cannot do much, in my opinion, based on the studies that I've seen today. So if you were to go and buy a red light therapy device, what should it look like? The most important thing in red light therapy are the wavelengths. So it must have the 808, 810, now, these two are bioequivalent wavelengths. Wavelengths that are too close to each other, they have near identical effects. So just having the 810 in your device is fine. The longer the wavelength, the deeper the penetration 
of that wavelength, and you need that to penetrate the skull. So if you have a device that has the 1060 or a 1070, practically it'll not be very different. They have near identical benefits. So having a device, let's say the 1064 nanometers, you're good. You don't need to go out looking for a 1070. Just because of the six nanometer difference, they will have very similar effects. And the studies suggest that. Pulsing, 10 Hertz means that the light is broken down 10 times and it's coming in 10 short bursts. And some studies found that a 10 to 40 Hertz pulse fits slightly better. Although most studies were used, did not use any pulsing. Irradiance is the power of a device, how strong the LEDs are, and you need as strong a device as possible. Thank you for watching. So finally, we can see that both clinical studies and real user data from the internet point to the same thing, that it's better to prevent a cognitive disease than to cure it once it happens. We as humans have been much more exposed to light, our ancestors have, and therefore the importance of light cannot be understated in our lives. It is a good idea to start using some red light therapy in our middle ages to prevent a cognitive decline in the older age. If you have any questions, please write them as comments underneath. And don't forget to check out our devices at RLT Home by typing redlighttherapyhome.com on your browser. We manufacture some of the most advanced red light therapy devices on the planet with very high densities of the longer wavelengths. Thank you once again for watching and I wish you the best in your journey on dealing with dementia. Take care.